somehow I wound up dating Shockley's daughter, and so I got to meet him. And I happened to ask him one day, uh, what, what really happened? And he said, well, you remember the square towers where we had the microwave every 30 miles to get TV from New York to Chicago? And yeah. So we were having noise figure problems with the front ends of the receivers on those things. And by the way, some of the articles I've seen shows the picture of the machine that they were using at the time. And what they had, the, either Britton or Bardeen, who was a theoretical physicist, said that if you get a certain carrier flow in a 1N21 diode, which is the old World War II uh, microwave uh, radar detector, first detector, we might be able to control the carrier flow on the detector side. So what he had was a point contact piece of germanium, point contact crystal receiver. And Britton or Bardeen, whichever it is, said put another point contact real close to it and bias it in different directions. And over here sets a Noise, uh, microwave noise figure machine. You know, microwave back then was like one gigahertz, two gigahertz, somewhere along there. And this was an old re black relay rack cabinet that had a bunch of meters across the top with some variax and some power supplies in it. And he could control the bias current on the receiver point. Of course, it had a had a, a uh, choke and stuff so the, the AC noise, the, the microwave coming in would, would look at the diode and see what the noise figure was. And the other point contact was hooked up to a different set of power supplies with meters and pots and, uh, and voltage control, current controls and things like that. And so he's diddling the current on one of them and notices the current on the other one changes. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And that lasted about a day, and he didn't really pay any attention to, to the currents because he's watching the noise figure meter. He's, you know, like mm -hmm. tuning up radio and he's watching the noise figure. Like the next day, he happens to be watching the meters. He may, turns this one, and the current on this one changes a half a mil or some amount. And the one over here changes like 10x that. Oh, that's interesting. So he diddles the current on this one, and the current on this one changes 10x. It wasn't 10x, it was 2 or 3. And so, now wait a minute. If I'm changing this by delta amount, and I'm getting, say, 3 delta amount change of current, isn't that the definition of an amplifier? So he thought about that for a while before he told anybody, you know, like maybe a week. He finally got Britton and Bardeen in and demonstrated this, turned off the noise figure meter. He started showing them this, this, how this changing the bias on one of these point contacts affected the current flow in the other side. And those three guys went away and figured out the physics of this before they ever went to their boss because they were definitely afraid they were going to be called quacks like the current guy that Bell Labs just fired. I don't know if you've read about that. You read about that? Yeah. And so they wanted to be on pretty solid ground before they went and reported it to their boss. And they developed a couple of theories. They brought the boss in and showed him. You know, he kind of lit up. And they went in the conference room and they went through the physics of it. And the boss walked over and locked the door. He says, there are four of us that know about this now. And we're not going to tell a soul until we thoroughly understand it. And so it was kept under wraps for a little while longer and then it finally trickled up management levels. And they didn't announce it to the world for about another six months until they had all of their ducks in order, the physics understood and everything, but it was a sheer 
pure accident. It was not an invention as a bright idea. <laughs> no aliens, huh? I thought no you aliens. Some aliens no came aliens. <laughs> and, and there's pictures. Some, some of the, the last write-up I saw about this was in the, the magazine. I think you get, I get send you a subscription, Invention and uh, yeah, Technology, Technology and Invention, and there was a write-up in it two, three issues back. And the picture of that box yeah. is in there that oh, really? has the knobs and, and the meters and stuff on it. Ooh. So, kind of a picture of, of you know, after Very the fact that, uh, yeah. The, the noise figure meter's gone and the, the RF power amp power meter's gone and that sort of thing. But the box... This was in uh, at Bell Labs, right? Yeah, in Allentown? Murray, Murray Hill. Murray Hill. Murray Hill. Murray Hill. Because my parents at that time lived in Madison, New Jersey, which is where about half of the guys that worked at Murray Hill lived. And so that that's... That's how it all started. It was just simply observation. And Shockley, Shockley was the physicist, you see. He was the guy trying to make the, the microwave stuff work. The other, <coughs> one of those guys, Britton or Bardeen, I don't remember which was which, was a mathematician, and the other one was a theoretical physicist. He didn't, he didn't know how to turn a knob. He was a math, basically another mathematician. So it was the the engineer in the Shockley part that recognized the phenomenon. Yeah, he became quite famous there for a while. I, I've forgotten about that until you mentioned it the other day. Yeah. And who, so where did you hear the story from? Hmm? Where did, who told you the from story? From Mr. Shockley himself. Oh, okay. That's cool. I only dated his daughter twice. I'm glad I didn't get involved in that family. <laughs> because he flat went off his rocker. We're later. all normal. <laughs> By comparison, yes, that's a fact.